The edge split modifier can be used to split up areas of our geometry to create individual islands. It can also be used to help with shading issues. To access the edge split modifier, first go to the modifiers tab in the properties panel. From here, click on the add modifier button, go to generate and then select edge split. The edge split modifier will now be operating on your selected object. The idea of the edge split modifier is to find specific edges and divide them into multiple edges. So let's take this edge here for example. I'm just going to use my annotate tool. We've got an edge right here and the idea is that it's being split into two edges at the same location. When the modifier is applied we'll be able to manipulate each of these edges independently of each other. But the problem is we can't actually see this in effect. In order to demonstrate this, I'm just going to remove the edge split modifier so that we can see our object in its normal state. And then I'm going to right click and shade smooth. You can see here we have a problem with the shading because smooth shading doesn't work well when we have these harsh angles for our edges. Now watch what happens if we re-add the edge split modifier. It fixes the issue almost entirely. And the reason why is because these edges are split and independent of each other. To best demonstrate the effect that the edge split modifier has on our geometry, we will in fact need to apply the edge split modifier. So we're going to apply this example and then move into edit mode. I'm then going to go into face select and select the top face. Now when I press G, what you would normally expect in edit mode is the ability to manipulate the positioning of the selected face, but it would also stretch and influence all of the surrounding faces as well. I'm going to press G, and you can see that it has been separated completely from the rest of the model. If I select another face or another, we just get the same effect all the way around because our edge split modifier with the parameters chosen affected the entire model. So every single one of these faces is technically disconnected from the rest of the mesh. The edge split modifier is most similar to the ability to split edges in edit mode. I'm going to use Control Z numerous times until I bring back the edge split modifier. And actually from this point, I'm just going to remove the modifier completely. Now currently we have smooth shading on this model. I'm going to hit the tab key to move into edit mode. Then I'm going to select an edge. Now if we go to the edge menu, and then scroll down, we get a variety of options, but we don't actually have the ability to split our edges in this way. So if we take a look at some of the other options, we should be able to find it under mesh because it actually works with all of our geometry. And all we need to do is come down to where it says split and then split by selection. So I can go left click, and now if I click and drag, you'll actually find that we have split this single edge and can manipulate it. But that's not exactly the same thing. So let's try again. But this time we're going to use a face. And I'm just going to use X a few more times just to get back to where we were before. We'll take that top face, go to mesh, split, and then split the selection. First of all, this has a change on the shading of the top face, as well as the rest of the model to an extent. We can take that top face, hit the G key, and manipulate its positioning. It's now completely independent of the rest of the mesh in terms of how we can influence it. So this is where the split tool is very similar, depending on how it's used, to the edge split modifier. 
Let's return to the modifier itself with a different example. So I'm just going to add Suzanne the monkey. And from here, we're going to add our edge split modifier. Now, again, we don't really see any difference visually with our geometry. But what we can do is we can manipulate the effect of the edge split modifier with the edge angle parameter. Now, for this to work, you first of all need to enable this parameter with this checkbox. And then from there, you can manipulate the angle limit. So by default, we have it set to 30 degrees. Let's see what happens if we apply this modifier on Suzanne. Press tab, deselect everything, and then let's press the L key to see which areas are selected. So here we're able to select an island with the L key. And this island has been created by applying the edge split modifier. Again, if I use Control Z to bring back the edge split modifier and then move into edit mode, press the L key on the same spot. And with the exception of the eyes, which are already their own islands, we select the entire model. Then we apply the modifier in object mode, return to edit mode, deselect everything, press L, and we've now split the geometry based on the defined angle. So this way, I might be able to select or more easily select the geometry that I want after using the edge split. So for example, we could select the in, inner ear on both sides and do whatever we want with that geometry. I can press the L key to select the eye area of the face. I could select areas of the nose. And all of this I'm able to do based on the angle limit that I set for the edge split modifier. For now, let's just pop back to when we had our edge split modifier. And let's try again, but with a different angle limit. So let's reduce this down to five degrees. Again, I'm going to just apply this modifier, make sure we're in object mode, apply, come back to edit mode and press the L key. And now the amount of geometry that we select per island is significantly reduced because we reduced the angle limit with the edge split modifier. I'm now going to turn your attention to the second checkbox, which is for sharp edges. Now, there are a few ways in which we can use this sharp edges option, both with the edge angle limiter and without it. So let's demonstrate with the edge angle. First of all, I'm going to use smooth shading on the model. And you can see that smooth shading is being applied, but some of the edges are already being maintained in terms of their sharpness. If I was to turn off the visibility of the edge split modifier, you would probably see this kind of effect on our model. Now, I want you to pay close attention to this ear here, because if I tab to go into edit mode, you can see that we have some geometry that almost loops around. So if I alt and left click, I can loop around here. And I can create a sharp edge here if I wanted to. Now, before I do that, I'm just going to increase the edge angle to the point where even the geometry of the ear is being smoothed. Next, I'm going to take this selection. I'm going to hit Control and E and mark it as sharp. Then I'm going to press the tab key to move back into object mode. And you should see the difference between this ear, which now looks much sharper along that edge, and this ear, which has the smooth shading applied normally. So this is one way in which we can use the sharp edges option to ensure that specific edges will always remain sharp, regardless of what the edge angle is defined here. And if we reduce this value, you can see over time, many of the other edges of the model start to sharpen as a result of the edge split modifier. 
Let's take a look now at what happens if we were to not use the edge angle at all. So I'm going to turn this off entirely. And currently you can see that we still have that sharp edge being added to our object, despite the fact that everything else currently has smooth shading. Now again, we can go flat shading and everything looks perfectly fine. And if we go back to smooth shading, we still keep that sharp angle. But the real power here is using the sharp edges to define which areas of our model are split away. So I am going to apply the edge split modifier, hit tab to go into edit mode. And from here, I can select my geometry or I can select entire islands and I can select an island with the L key. So if I press L, I can select the island that has been created by using the sharped edges. I could then press the G key and I can manipulate this island of geometry independently to the rest of my model. By comparison, over on the other side, we did not mark any sharp edges. So if I was to attempt to select the inner ear on the other side of this mesh, I end up selecting the majority of the mesh because it's all a part of the same island. We didn't use our sharp edges to define where the geometry would be split. The edge split modifier can have a profound impact on how other modifiers are going to affect your model, especially depending on where it is in the modifier stack. For example, let's add the edge split modifier again to Suzanne. And this is a new Suzanne, so nothing has been added in terms of sharp edges or anything like that. And then let's add a second modifier. For example, let's add a subdivision surface. When I do this, you'll see that there's a lot of gaps begin to appear around our model. And these gaps appear where the edge split would be taking effect on the object. If I was to manipulate this value to reduce the edge angle, we would get more gaps and more islands. Now this can create all manner of different effects on our geometry. But if we were to manipulate the positioning of the edge split modifier in this stack, so let's bring it below, it now looks as though the edge split modifier isn't affecting the subdivision surface, and it's not. What's happening now is that the subdivision surface is creating the new geometry, and the edge split modifier is using that new geometry to calculate where the edges are going to be split, much like it did before when it was being used by itself. So that's it on the edge split modifier. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notifications icon for updates and future videos. For now, that's all from me and I'll see you in the next video.